Praise God. If you have your Bibles, um, I wonder if we could go to the book of Exodus. And I'm in Exodus chapter 17, beginning with verse 8. Yes. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. God bless the reading of the word. Amen. You all may be seated. For our New Year celebration, one of the things that the Lord asked me to encourage the church with was to lift up a banner. Lift up a banner for our God. And this passage is the first appearance of banners in Scripture. And it shows us that the Lord is our banner, who always gives us the victory. Amen. It's a picture of the fact that as believers, we have a common enemy that preys on our weaknesses, attacks when we are most vulnerable, and is bent on preventing us from fulfilling our purpose in God. Mm -hmm. This is what the spirit of Amalek is really all about. Amen. It's demonic, it's a sworn enemy of the people of God. And so a spiritual Israel, it's our sworn enemy too. Mm -hmm. Now banners are, in scripture, are very significant. Yes. They didn't originate in Israel, but they are very much a part of their history and their culture. And banners have been used for thousands of years and have carried a message that is un understood, though unspoken, in many arenas. And I've got a few um, that I captured. And, and just as examples, um, banners, in another is synonymous with the term flag or standard. Okay? And um, what does this first picture say to you? Freedom. This is our American flag and it represents freedom. Amen. We rally around this flag as Americans. And it's unspoken. Amen. We all understand what it costs for us to raise this flag. Amen. Amen. What about the next one? Surrender. Surrender. Very common. This is a military flag. Amen. But we all understand, even though we may never have served in the military that when you put up the white flag that you are surrendered. What about this one? Anybody know who those are? The Knights Templar? No, these are um, the, the people that, uh, the Swiss Guard, that uh, protect the Vatican 
and carry the colors of the Pope in the Vatican. Um, they have been wearing this, I believe, for about um, since the 1500s, and they still wear the same regalia and carry the, the flag of the Vatican. What about this one? So this this is a, a, a divisive flag, but we all understand what this is about. This under this flag, over six million Jews were killed, and many many Christians, thousands of Christians who protected Jews were killed under this flag. Amen. Amen. This flag um, was under this flag that they they crossed into Europe and the Americans and the Europeans allies against this flag. Amen. So that the British and the European countries could remain sovereign and have freedom. What does it mean when a flag is is not all the way up. It's held at half mass. Somebody's died. And we want to honor them. Okay, what about the next one? This is Iwo Jima. This is a sign of victory and this this very poignant and memorable picture is where they were staking the claim and saying we have had victory and we have taken this hill. Amen. That's what we need to do as believers. Amen. 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 And the next one? <laughs> Those the, the young people in the room don't remember this, but I remember when I, I think I was five or six years old when um, and my parents who refused to buy a decent television, <laughs> we watched it on the little black and white TV. And they were saying one stop, one small step for mankind. And they put that flag in the ground. And this is the first time that man made it to um, the moon. And man had stepped on and did the first moonwalk. Next one. How many remember this? This is 9-11. And once again, we're rallying behind a symbol of our freedom and a symbol of who we are as Americans. And we're not defeated even when the enemy attacks. Amen. We're still more than conquerors. I think I have one more. No. Okay. So anyway, you get the picture. What about this one? I did have one more. I just forgot it wasn't on the screen. What about this one? This is one that we raise in honor and praise and glory of our God. This is very much a banner. Amen. And when we stand in procession with these banners, we're saying the Lord is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we are worshiping and honoring Him for who He is. Amen. So no one really needs to tell us what these banners mean. And the same was true for Israel. Amen? Amen. Banners oftentimes were just wooden stakes that were put in the ground. And they would have metal or wooden shaped figures or emblems fastened to a long pole. And they would shine in the sun and could be seen from long distances. And some were fabric like the ones that we use today. Um, and they would have symbols on them. And they would be affixed to the, these long poles. And the, the banners serve the same way they do for our, our armies, as a rallying point for our troops before battle. Um, in, in the U.S. armies, there's a color guard. And that color guard is there to protect the flag. Am I right, Bishop Kilby? They're there to protect the, the flag. They use strong young men who are armed to carry flag before the army. And when they are in battle, when the dust is flying and the bullets and the cannons or whatever is going on, they can see that flag and they know how to get back to their regiments because they have those flags raised up. In the same way in the desert, when Moses erected the tabernacle, Numbers chapter 2 tells us that the Lord spoke to Moses 
and gave him specific instructions yes. for engrafting standards where each of the 12 tribes were to pitch their tents around the tabernacle. And Numbers 2-3 says that in the east was Judah's standard, and in the south was Reuben's, and in the west was Ephraim's, and in the north was Dan's. And on the north, with Dan's standard, stood Asher and Naphtali. And on the west, Benjamin and Manasseh with Ephraim. And on the east, Ishakar and Zebulun. And on the south, Gad and Simeon with Reuben's standard. So they were all represented in their array around the tabernacle. And that could be seen for miles around. The Bible doesn't tell us very much about the colors of these banners or standards, but Jewish writers tell us that the colors were the same as those that appear on the ephod or the breastplate that the, the Jewish priests wore. So Dan's would have been a sapphire blue, and Judah's would have been an emerald green. And the Talmud tells us that the four main standards of Judah and Reuben and Ephraim and Dan would have had the symbols of the lion for Judah, the eagle for Dan, the ox for Ephraim, Ephraim and a man for Reuben. And we'll see these same figures in Ezekiel and Revelation with the four living creatures and in the four Gospels which reveal the facets of Jesus' character. Matthew depicts Jesus as the king or the lion of Judah. And Mark reveals Jesus as the burden bearer or the ox. And Luke shows Jesus as the human one or the man. And John reveals Jesus as the divine one or the eagle. So even around this tabernacle, and they would have been sacrificing right in the middle of this, you would have seen the cross and you would have seen the character of Jesus depicted in these standards, and the father looking down would have seen the blood that appeased the sin of man. Amen. 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 And even at that distance, they would have seen the cross. So this picture is from the old to the new, from Genesis to Re Revelation. Yes. Jesus is revealed. Amen. Amen. And I believe the Lord would say to us, that he has given us his banner. And it's time to lift up in victory over our troubles the Lord's banner that's over us. He's given us a banner of love. And it must be seen in order for our victory to be realized. We have to plant the stake out against our troubles. We have to set it on the mountain and declare victory. We must stake out our territory in God. Let's pray for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you that you have lifted a banner of victory over us. As we face whatever troubles we have today, whatever battles we're fighting, Father, I ask, Lord, that you help us to be confident, help us to trust that we already have the victory because of your finished work on the cross. Lord, today we mark out our territory. Lord, we lift up a banner for our God. We shout with a shout of praise in victory that victory is ours. No weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. Lord, your word declares that when the enemy shall come in, like a flood, you will lift up a banner against him. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I've been seeing our church in each of us placing banners in the mountains of our territory, Pastor. I've been seeing it since December 31st that we're going through and I, I'm seeing healing. I'm seeing money that's been tied up getting released. I'm seeing deliverance from long-standing 
trials. Amen. I'm seeing things coming into divine order as we stake yes. those banners into the ground and mark our territory. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for us to see some changes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. You know, leaders in the military brigades are skilled in knowing when to advance and when to retreat. Yes. He has command over his army and he can rally them because he's a leader. And he looks out on the war theater and strategically positions his soldiers in order to gain territory and win the victory. Amen. And as believers, we are in the Lord's army. Yes, yes. And we must be men and women under authority of the captain of the host. Amen. Amen. As soldiers in the Lord's army, we must be attuned and vigilant and ready for the Lord's move. Yes. Amen. We must move with him. Amen. A leader always rallies his troops right. under the banner. Yes. The Lord is saying, get ready. Lift high the banner of our God. We may not want to engage in warfare, but we are constantly under attack. But praise God because the Bible says the battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we've been made more than conquerors. Amen. Why? Because of the cross. The victory has already been won. Look to the standard of the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. In John 3, Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We can't win in the natural. We walk by faith. Sometimes we think if we work harder, pray longer, say just the right prayer, then we're going to conjure up a victory. But I'm here to tell you that we're not witches. We don't cast spells. Amen? We are the saints of the Most High. We've already had the victory. The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So when we lift up the banner of God, we're declaring faith. We're declaring that we have the victory. Yes. And so oftentimes, you know, when we don't get it in the first five minutes, we go, oh, God's not answering. It's not manifesting. And we negate what God is longing to do in our lives. His banner is victory over you. And we're always assured victory. I'm so glad that the banner of the Lord over us is love. Amen. Because it means whatever battle I'm facing today, I can move with confidence that Jehovah Nisi will give me total victory. He's got me covered. Psalm 60 verse 4 says, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Do you believe that today? Amen. I believe the Lord has answered our prayers. And we're about to see the fulfillment of some long-awaited dreams. We are about to break through. Amen. What do you have before the Lord today? Lift up the banner. Declare your victory. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yes. You see, when you wave the Lord's banner, you're saying to the enemy, you're already defeated. Yes. You're finished. Yes. You're staking out a claim as far and as wide yes. as you can see that banner. Mm -hmm. And as far and as wide and as deep and as high, oh, yes. so goes the anointing. Mm -hmm. And the enemy cannot come any closer. Amen. The Song of Solomon in chapter 2, and I, I love this book. 
He says, he brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Hallelujah. We don't really know and understand fully what that means. But in scripture, the banqueting house is the house of wine. It's the house where the Lord entertains. It's a place where he's arrayed all of his splendor, all of the delights that we can feast on. It's the finest wine that we can drink until we're full, until we're overcome with the splendor of a table that the Lord has arrayed. And when you and I became believers, he opened the door to his house of wine. He opened his banqueting table to us and said, come and dine. Come feast at my table. Amen. Amen. We're invited to enter into a place of royal provision. Yes. yes. But so many times, we don't act like king's kids. Amen. We go through the day-to-day -day and what we're doing, and we don't recognize that we've been invited to the Lord's table. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Oh, yeah. That Amen. his banner over us is love. Amen. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's so sad that when we don't live at our level of privilege. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a great picture in the story of David when he went out to capture Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was Solomon's, uh, I'm sorry, Jonathan's son. And he was in hiding and living beneath his privilege, even though he was a king's son. And David had a covenant with Jonathan. Moreover than that, even though Saul sought him, sought to kill him, was jealous over him, and for 15 years sought to take his life. Even in death, he wanted to honor King Saul and his son Jonathan. So he sent out his servants to say, are there any of his sons left? Bring them to me. And I can imagine Mephibosheth, and Mephibosheth was lame. He had been dropped. They were fleeing, and he had been dropped, and he was lame. And I can imagine that he came in fear and trembling. In fact, the word says, he said, what, why are you interested in a dead dog such as me? But David said, you're a king's kid. You're going to eat at my table every day for the rest of your life. It's a picture of what Jesus did for you and I. You see, we may come knocked out, dragged down. We may be lame. But the Lord is saying, come and die. Come to the table. My banner over you is love. Hallelujah. What's at the king's table for you and I right now? The king's table in the realm of the spirit is the word of God. The word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's, it's a law of the Lord is perfect. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. We need to feast on the word, people of God. We need to feast until it fills us to overflow. Amen. Praise God. Jesus said, I have meat that you don't know anything about. Amen. The secret of being filled is in his word. Amen. The secret of finding him and building your relationship and banqueting is in his word. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, we're a we're a fast food kind of 
the culture right now. You know, and some of us, we come to church to get what we can get on Sunday morning. And that's it for us for the rest of the week. We're not interested in opening this book. We're not interested in finding out what thus saith the Lord is for the morning, for that day. We don't spend time asking the Lord, how would you like to use me? And we miss out. We miss out on opportunity. We miss out on the Lord taking control of our day. Because we're in the driver's seat. And we, we got a little tidbit. And the best that Pastor Kilby and the other pastors here, the best we can give you is, is an appetizer. Something born out of the overflow of our relationship with Jesus. But each one of us has to get it for ourselves. Amen. 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 We ought to take what we hear on Sunday morning and go back and look at those scriptures and feast and find out what else the Lord has to say to each one of us about what's preached today. Amen? Amen. we got to keep filling up. You do too. Amen? We pray for five minutes and nothing happens. You know? It's not McDonald's, people of God. But the Lord is, is progressive. And there are times when, in a moment, the miracle comes. But most times, yes, yes, it's, yes. it's a long-standing, yes, yes. growing process. That's right. That's right. Amen. You know, the root word of the word banner is covering. And I, I want us to focus on the fact that a flag in, this, in, in, the, in the realm of the spirit is a covering. The banner, it means that the Lord has you covered. Amen. Amen? You don't have to worry about a thing. Do you trust him? Do you believe him today? The third point I want to make is Sometimes we get so weary, we want to throw in the towel. But the Lord is saying, now is not the time to throw in the towel. Now is not the time to surrender. Amen? So many times when we're in battle, the Lord is saying, continue to fight. And we want to throw in the towel. We're tired. And I get that. I, I get being tired. But I know that when I'm tired, it's because I'm trying to do things in my own strength. I know that it's because I haven't done what I need to do to prepare and to be strengthened and to be fed and nourished. Amen? What that does is it hinders our warfare. And I know you guys are wondering, why did she read Exodus about Amalek? Well, I'll tell you. Amalek comes at your weakest and most vulnerable time. The Israelites had just left Egypt. They had just crossed into the valley, just gotten past the Red Sea. And here comes this army of Amalekites saying, they're tired. They're weak. Let's get them. But God had them right in the palm of his hand. Yes. They must have missed the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Hallelujah. So they decided to come in and pray on them at their weakest moment. This is what happens when you don't spend time in the Word. The grace of God is laid out for you if you'll take it. So I, I want to encourage you today to be filled. Amen? Be filled with his word. These are desperate times all around us. But we're going to have to trust him. So whatever you're believing for, 
I want you to meditate on the scripture that is the answer to what you're saying. Amen. They're believing God Amen. for it. Thanks, If you need a healing, he sent his word to heal you. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. If you're being attacked on work, read Psalm 18. If you need favor, we've been confessing favor every Sunday. God wants to give these things to you. Yes. Confess the word. Take that prayer of favor. Before you get out of bed, recite that. You're worried about your house, your belongings? Recite Psalm 91. Yes. Do you need some provision? Yes. Recite Psalm 91. Recite Deuteronomy 28. I'm telling you, if you can focus on what they're saying in Psalm, in Deuteronomy 28, you can focus on the problem. Because you know that God's got your back. He says you're the hand and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Amen? Do you all receive that today? Do you believe that you're the head and not the tail? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Please don't negate your confession with your mouth. Please don't miss your blessing because you can't see it. We walk by faith. Amen. And so many times, we're just on the brink of a blessing. And we go, oh, well, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That was just pie in the sky. Let me tell you something. The enemy is constantly whispering in the back of your head. We've been hearing that for years and years. And it's never happened. The fact of the matter is, I don't know the Lord's timing. But I do know he's never late. Amen. I know that I've never seen the righteous Amen. forsaken it. or their seed begging for bread. Amen. 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 So I may not see it, but I know it's coming. Yes. And you've got to shut down the noise and get that banner and stake it in the ground and tell the enemy you've got to resist him Amen. so he'll flee. You got to tell them, this is mine. Yes. You can't have this. You can't have my children. You can't have my life. You'll not afflict me. You have to tell him. Because he wants to steal. You know what else steals? Lack of knowledge. When you don't know, and you're relying on what somebody else told you. I mean, you can find almost all kinds of ridiculousness on the web. And the fact that it's written and it's online doesn't mean it's true. you got to study this stuff for yourself. It's got to be validated. You know, back, you know, 20 years ago, they never went to press unless... They could verify a story and confirm it by several witnesses. Even the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. And we go out on the internet and, and you know, they'll tell you that asteroids are going to drop on the planet and we're all going to be destroyed in a hundred years. And we all believe it. And there are scientists that are coming out with all kinds of nonsense. They're still debating as to whether we we came from chimpanzees. <laughs> we didn't. That's their problem. <laughs> Even Darwin retracted that one, and they're still fighting over it. That's right. Lack of knowledge. Tradition. Well, we've always done it that way. It's always been that way. So it can't possibly change. I don't know about you, but my Bible says, Behold, I do a new thing among you. Shall you not know it? The Lord is constantly on the move. 
religion grabs onto a tradition, holds onto it, and says, this is how we've always done it. And when the Lord comes with something new, we don't receive it because we never did it that way before. And you miss out on a new expression of who God is. Because it came from something you never knew anything about. Well, I don't know about you, but what I know about who God is, I can put in a symbol. He, every, the steadfast love of the Lord is new every morning. The angels go around the throne every day in awe. Holy, holy, that's the Lord God. They're seeing a new facet that they've never seen, and they're in his presence. So be open to what the Lord might want to do that's just a hair different from what you're used to. Hallelujah. And you just might stumble on a blessing. If I hadn't trusted... When I was sitting under a hair dryer reading the book of Corinthians about speaking in tongues, I'd still be in a church going through the ritual. I'm sure I'd be loving God because I always did. But I wouldn't know all and have experienced all of the amazing things, the miracles, and the display of God's glory if I hadn't trusted and push back because I'm gonna tell you my leadership said don't ever speak of that again that's not that's not what we believe and I'm like well it's in the word how do you not believe what's in the word but see in tradition you go so far away from what's in the word and begin to practice what's always been done that you lose sight yes. of the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. We should be coming to church expecting a miracle. Yes. We should be excited to come into the house because in this corporate body, when we are worshiping and we are unified and we have pure hearts before Him, God can move. Yes. And we should be expecting it. We should be preparing our hearts before we come. How do we do that? We put the banner in the grass. Yes. And the enemy loves to get in the car on Sunday morning. He loves to. He loves to cause the, the, the keys to be lost and things to not work out and be delayed and, you know, all kinds of craziness. He wants to start arguments first thing in the morning. Kids don't want to get up out of bed. You know, puts a spirit of slumber on them and you gotta fight to get them out of your bed. Sometimes you gotta fight. You gotta press through. You better press through and, and know that there's a victory waiting in the house and that God's ready to come through. As I close, I want us just to be mindful of the fact that Amalek attacked at Rephidim. Rephidim is a Hebrew word that means resting places. And Pastor, I, I just know there's a theme that, that God is speaking to us as a people about rest and about victory and about banners. Amen? Sister Doris mentioned it in her, her words of exhortation at the beginning of the year. 2015 is the year of rest. So what it says to me is that God is saying that there, there's an attack coming, but you can be ready. Lift high the banner of our God. Be a watchman. Be rest. Be, you know, be mindful. Put on your armor in the morning. Before you walk out of the house, you need to confess out loud and physically put on your spiritual armor. Amen? Amen. You watch.
watches over his word to perform it. Yeah. And see, when we, when we don't do this, we end up with a stony heart. And I'd be willing to bet 80% of the church, and I'm not just talking about our church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, has a stony heart. And the Lord can't break through because we don't believe, because we don't trust Him, and because we don't know enough about what's in this book to make it to the next battle. And the Lord wants to give us a heart of flesh that he can move and change and do something with. Amen. Ask the Lord to replace our stony hearts with a heart of flesh. Life is in the way when you're just existing day to day, trying to make it. The Lord wants each of us to act like a son and a daughter of the king. Think beyond your needs and get engaged in the kingdom. There are those who understand that the love of God is greater still. And you know of his goodness. And sometimes you got to go back and remember those past victories. In those seasons when you're dry and it just doesn't look like this trouble is ever going to go away. You got to remember those past victories. Amen. Amen. You got to remember when the Lord met you. Amen. Don't let the enemy take you down with what you're experiencing right now. Be encouraged. Be exhorted. Come and die. Yeah, hallelujah. The Lord is patiently waiting for each of us to come to the table. Amen. 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 I wonder if we could just take a moment to just come to the table and just spend a moment worshiping the Lord before we close. And I'm just going to ask Pastor Kilby to come up and our ministers just to come and let's just rally as a people and, and come before the Lord. And just let him know how much we love him, how much we need him. And let's lift up the banner of God. Amen. We, the, I, I wish I could convey what I'm seeing, but I, I'm seeing. It's almost like we're we're an army of warriors, and we each have our standard, and we're each just rising up on this mountain of whatever our trouble is, and we're staking it into the ground, and the Lord is is just applauding us and rooting us on and saying, I've got you covered. And I've got a banner that's enveloping all of you. And I have a victory for you. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing on you because you've taken a stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's build an altar. Jehovah Nisi is here. Yeah.